Hello and welcome. This is View from the Top. I am Modili Sharafa Isuf. With 170 million people representing a massive domestic market and a need to improve the supply stability of raw ingredients, Nigeria hopes that growth in agribusiness will help spur demand for the nation's farmed output. From 2002 to date, sales in the food processing sector have more than doubled, yet it is a market that is still in its infancy. Some of the main concerns investors have had in the past about setting up agribusiness in Nigeria, about investing in a market in which both the supply of raw materials and the demand are uncertain. Backward integration, a practice where companies are encouraged to cultivate their own raw materials by purchasing the supplies or establishing farms to grow produce for their factories, gained momentum following the crash of crude oil prices uh, which started in the fourth quarter of 2014. It is perhaps in a bit to check the huge capital flight and the pursuit of the Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan that government recently developed a new policy on tomatoes. Nigeria is set to import an average of 200,000 metric tons of tomato concentrate per annum, mostly due to inadequacy in capacity to produce tomato concentrate. Current demand for fresh tomato fruits is estimated at about 2.5 million metric tons per annum, while the country produces only about 1.8 million metric tons. Despite the supply gap, about 40% of fresh tomato produce is lost due to wastage arising from poor post-harvest handling and inadequate storage. The backward integration policy is therefore designed to increase local production of tomatoes required for fresh consumption and for processing, increasing local production of tomato concentrate and reducing post-harvest losses. Haji Sani Dangote is chairman, Nigeria Agribusiness Group. He's also vice president of the Dangote Group, which has invested about $20 million in a tomato processing company. He kindly joins me on view from the top today, and he and I will be discussing these issues and more. I want to thank him very much. Thank you very much, Haji Dangote, for joining us. Thank you very much. We'll be settling down to our conversation right after this biography. Born on 20 April 1961, Sani Dangote got his bachelor's degrees in business administration. He's also an alumnus of the Harvard Business School. A co-founder and vice president of the Dangote Group, he also sits on the board of several other companies including Nigerian Textile Mills PLC, NutraSuite Limited, Gum Arabic Limited, Dangote Textile Mills Limited, Alsan Insurance Brokers, Dan Hydro Company Limited, Danza Food Processing Company Limited, and Dangote Farms Limited. Ahaji Dangote is also the Deputy Chairman of the African Gum Arabic Producers Association and two time president of the Lagos Polo Club. In 2015, Sani Dangote was appointed the Consul General of the Romanian Embassy in Nigeria. And beginning from May 7, there's been an increase uh, in, in tariff on, on tomato uh, concentrate from 5 to 50 percent and a levy of $1,500 per metric tons. Do you think this will deter importers? It is going to raise the bar on terms of cost of imported uh, concentrate. And, but also as giving the packing or packaging companies that import concentrate and repack it in locally an opportunity because the retail packs that used to come and also compete with them has been totally banned. So more or less it is going to is give and take that's given to them because the competition that comes in with the retail pack is now totally stopped, whether it is from ECOWAS or non ECOWAS countries. Now the tariff given to them I will add on to the imported uh, triple concentrate obviously has risen the bar and will not be as, as cheap as they used to uh, have it in the past. But also, uh, it does not eliminate their profit completely. It has just reduced the kind of profitability that it, they had in the past. You know, every time government uh, introduces these kinds of protectionist policies, the small glass will be waiting in the wings. How can we checkmate them? You know, it is uh, two sides of the coin you have to look at. It's not just about uh, a protection idea. It's about incentivizing local production. production. It's just like you have 
an in-house capacity. But due to the economics uh, comparative advantage, you are disadvantaged because others have got some economic uh, indicators that are far better than you. Lower interest rate, easy access to funding, uh, equipment, land, water usage, uh, export incentive also. So they were incentivized to export while your own are not incentivized to produce. So you need to check that balance and that's what this tariff is all about. It's not about a you know, uh, uh, protectionist idea. It's about incentive, incentivizing our local production so that they'll be able to do a catch-up game. Uh, otherwise, they definitely will remain perpetually in poverty, remain in lack of capacity to produce, and which tells the whole story about all our agricultural value chain. It's not only on tomato. It's the same thing we've seen in rice. If you don't incentivize the sector, Definitely, Nigeria will remain the number one importer of rice worldwide. The same thing is happening in tomato. You talk about smugglers. Smugglers will always be there whether you raise the, the duty to 150 or 50% or 10% whatever. There is always someone that is trying to get it for free, for nothing. The biggest challenge is those who adulterate the product so that you can still get a, a, a cheaper product to be able to make money out of the people. When we had the case of NABDAC and so on, uh, doing audit and finding 90, over almost 90% of the product available were adulterated. We are having a lot of uh, starch on non, you know, higher percentage of tomato. What was the reason? It was not because there was a tariff increase. It was not because there was. It was just because some people wanted just to make more money and cheat on the system. That's all. So it's not about this policy will incentivize the. Um, the uh, smuggling. Definitely, yes, the price will go up, but the good thing about tomato concentrate is we know mostly all the packaging companies, and you cannot bring in tomato in a drum and sell direct to an end user. You must process and add water. The only thing they do, they add water, and some of them add a bit of salt to, to bring about the test of salt. So we know all the packaging companies. You can actually monitor those packaging companies and see whether they are smuggling or not. So an ordinary smuggler will not just import it and start selling on the street. You definitely have to take it to a processor to process. And that, we know the number of companies that are packaging. And they, it's also in their interest now that the package one has been banned. So they will now have, have no, no serious competition or adulterated uh, package uh, uh, units. Government plan is that all this will encourage the sector and Nigeria will be, will be exporting in the next 18 months. Is this not an overly optimistic projection? It is not uh, an overly optimistic position. It is possible because, like I said, tomato takes 90 to 110 days maximum to grow. And in every part of this country, we have the opportunity to produce tomato. Even in the south-south, you can produce tomato in a greenhouse. Not to talk about up, up in the north or central or southwest, where you can also grow tomato, either in a greenhouse or in an orphan field. The only issue with tomato challenge is the lifespan of tomato. After three to four days, if you don't process it, it gets rotten, and then you have to throw it away. So once we can create the incentive for industries to be set up, then that will incentivize and, and uh, push the local production of tomato to be up because a farmer or whoever grows tomato is rest assured that it's an uptaker that will take the excess, that is not able to sell in the fresh market. So tomato from the farm to the kitchen, fresh tomato is within three to four days. If you don't take it to the kitchen, within that cycle, forget it. It starts to get rotten. So with that kind of a situation, you don't expect farmers to keep producing more and more and more. But with this uh, policy, put in by this administration, it means go and produce the excess can be taken into the market immediately. immediately. And that will be processed all within this one or two days. And that's what is, uh, what is happening.